8.58 a.m. A hold was ordered while a broken valve in the liquid oxygen fueling system was repaired. In the mercury control center, the minutes ticked away. 9.23 a.m. The count was picked up. Around the world, the mercury tracking network reported condition green. All mercury stations uh, at T minus five, uh, side zone eight, and get status and green light on request. Yeah, Matt. Go. ECS. Go. Sequence. Go. Electrical. Go. ASCS. Go. RCS. Go. Stop. Go. CM. Go. CO. CO. Go. Light. Go. Tony. Go. In the final moments, T minus 30 seconds and counting. Roger, under 
understand go for at least seven orbits. Astronaut John Glenn is in orbit, 100 miles above the Atlantic. 17,545 miles an hour, five miles a second. 22 minutes after liftoff, lunchtime in space over Kano, Nigeria. Across the emerging nations of Africa. Then Zanzibar and out over the vast Indian Ocean into a sunset seen from space. 53 minutes after liftoff, Mouche, Australia. lights and its heart on. Across the dark Pacific and into the sunrise off the California coast. And just as the, as I looked back up out the window, I had uh, literally thousands of small luminous particles uh, swirling around the capsule and going away from me at maybe uh, three to five miles per hour. Across the United States in eight minutes. White Sands, New Mexico. Corpus Christi, Texas. Eglin, Florida. Cape Canaveral. The flight continues. Orbit number two. Around the world in 88 minutes. Mercury control, a decision. Commit the spacecraft to a third orbit. Good afternoon, Seven. Uh, reading you loud and clear. Oh, Roger, this is Ben Chapsan. How's the cape in sight down there? It looks real fine from up here. I can see the uh, whole state of Florida just laid out like on a map. Orbit number three, out in the Atlantic, the recovery forces are ready. The Atlantic, Columbus crossed it in three months. Lindbergh in 33 and a half hours. John Glenn in 14 minutes. For the third time, the Mercury tracking network receives complete data from the spacecraft. Data which is instantly transmitted to the Goddard Space Flight Center near Washington. Fed into the computers, for reduction and immediate retransmission to Mercury Control at Cape Canaveral. The entire process requires less than 30 seconds. At Cape Canaveral, the time is 1.43 p.m. At Mouche, Australia, it's 1.43 a.m. But no one is asleep. Uh, this is Friendship 7. Uh, in 45 more seconds, I'd like to have you send a message for me, please. Over. I want you to send a message to the director, or to the Commandant, U.S. Marine Corps, in 
in Washington. Uh, tell him I have my four hours required flight time in for the month and request flight jet be established for me. Over. I did well there. For the third time, John Glenn sees the sun rise out of the trackless Pacific. Then it is time to fire the retro rockets that will slow the spacecraft and bring it back to Earth. Mercury team at Cape Canaveral reaches a crucial decision. Texas Capcom Cape Flight. Go ahead, Cape Flight. Go ahead. Uh, we have decided to re-enter with the pack on. He will have to crank in the periscope manually and override manually the O5G relay, which should be at a ground elapsed time of 044353. Can you give him that message, please, Guayman? Uh, Roger, we can do. As the spacecraft arcs down over the United States, the minutes seem like hours. This is Friendship 7, a real fireball outside. Columbus and Magellan, Sir Francis Drake and the Wright brothers kept before him a rendezvous in time and history and the forward march of man. After four hours and 56 minutes in space, John Glenn and Friendship 7 returned to Earth. Four hours and 56 minutes in space as the representative of all the members of the Mercury team, all the people of America, and all men who treasure freedom everywhere. The voyage of Friendship 7 marks only the end of the beginning of free man's exploration of the vast, infinite ocean of space.